everyone. Thanks for joining me for the Victory Over Circumstance podcast. I'm Mom AJ, model, actress, and social entrepreneur. Circumstances are temporary. Your purpose is not. And though we may all have been dealt with different circumstances in life, our experiences as women is universal. This is a safe space for women to be able to divulge their personal stories, share their life lessons, and tell us how they overcame their various obstacles. The goal here is to empower women to fulfill their life purpose by learning from others. Join the movement that celebrates the tenacity of women healing through storytelling. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning back in to the Victory Over Circumstance podcast. I'm Mom AJ, your host, and I appreciate your listenership as always. Make sure you are watching the videos on YouTube. Most of these episodes have a video component on YouTube. So if you're watching, thank you for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. And if you're listening, Also, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what more you want to hear, what kind of guests you want to see, and I'm going to do my best to provide, okay? All right. Today, I have my girlfriend, Melody Ray. What's up? What's up? Yeah, she goes by Melody Ray. She's an amazing, amazing person. Um, I love working with her. We met on set working together for a few people. I think Fabletics is like our main thing yeah (laughs) and um I just loved your energy always on set never like never weird because in our industry people tend to be a little weird yeah yeah. and they can be a little strange to get to know I've worked with some people that I still don't know their damn name because they're just (laughs) that weird I'm like calm down at this point anybody competing like we still we all gonna work I promise you if you say hi to me you're you're gonna live yeah whatever it's true (laughs) but it's it was awesome getting to know you all these um days and it's been like two years now working together so it's been awesome how are you feeling I'm good I mean like you said the industry can be a little weird meeting people getting to know people like you could see people all the time and you're still like, hey, uh, wait, what's, what's that person's name again? <laughs> nice to see you. Nice to see you um, again. So it's good to connect and actually find people that you can relate to and have fun with on set. For like sure. really connect. Yeah. It's always, always a pleasure. And um, I just wanted to, I guess, kind of go into our conversation because you're someone that is super, super positive. I love your, like, is Ray your la- your real name? Like, I know Candil is your last Candil's name. Candil is my last name. Okay. Ray's my middle name. Okay. So yeah. Ray's at, at your actual middle yeah. name. I love yeah. it. Well, yeah. you are such a ray of sunshine. <laughs> <laughs> you really Thank are. You. And I love your positivity, your energy, everything you emanate. It's all about love. If you follow her on Instagram, that's at Miss Melody Ray, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yes. You'll see just just how loving and optimistic and just positive you are. And like, I love people like you. And uh, recently, like you posted something about like, um, it's not always sunshine. It's not always yeah. positivity. And like, how do you get through those days when it's not all sunshine? and positivity and as much as you want to be a positive person because the more you stay in that lane the more you attract that's what I believe at least right but what happens when we're having those yucky days where we don't feel like fucking being positive yeah I think it's sitting in the negative that's what I was saying on there is like when you're sitting in your negative feelings you can kind of understand what you're going through right it's like if you're like man I need to be positive right now then you really you're just pushing down those feelings right and when you push those feelings down it's like wait where do I go from here I'm lost I feel like just stuck because you're not really measuring up and allowing yourself to to feel feel yeah Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah and that's that's the one thing that I've been learning more and more is like you have to be able to let yourself feel like feel all the feelings yeah good they are good and bad feel all of them and just know that they are temporary they are temporary they are visitors they will come and they will go i want the i want the happy one yeah. to stay i want the happy feeling to stay i want her to you stay you want to hold on that know, to, as, long as, as long as you can she can but the <laughs> negative feelings you know i want them to go they they don't need to overstay their welcome yeah. but they are visitors they are guests and you can just decide when they get out of your home like all right i don't need you anymore i felt you enough you can go. Yeah. And when I think about it like that, I'm like, okay, I can feel however the hell I'm feeling. Like I just got over my period. And when I'm telling you, I get so emotional. Like I never used to, whatever you, I 
don't even believe in PMS, but maybe there's some truth to it. I'm sure there is. I never really used to feel like crazy, but I was feeling so emotional yeah. and crying. And then I was like, why do I feel this way? <laughs> and it's just because like, hormones. I was, <laughs> first of all, hormones. <laughs> and second of all, I've been, pen, I've just had pent up anxiety that I was just keeping in me that I wasn't really allowing myself to feel number one. And then yeah. two, be, once you feel it, being able to let go of it. So I'm just realizing, and it felt so good to cry my eyes out yeah. and not even knowing why. So you but, didn't know why? You didn't find the root cause of anxiety? I didn't really know why, Yeah. but it just felt good to release. Yeah. It felt good to cry and let it all out. And then I kind of like, what was that? Outside of the hormones, like what was causing me? And I realized, yeah. you know, it's because of everything going on, Instagram sometimes, and my last episode was about Instagram versus reality. It's like, I just feel sometimes like I'm not doing enough quick enough. Yeah. Like my pace, maybe I need to pick up my pace and, oh my God, I'm going to be 30 soon. What am I doing? Da, da, da. Yeah. And it's just like that whole, all of that was just sending me into a tizzy. So yes, feel it, let go, and then get to the root of the cause of yeah. the feelings, right? And also pick up your pace. That's a good one to say. I was thinking about this the other day, like sitting on the couch. I'm thinking about what other people are thinking of me mm. while I'm in my home. Me too. Laying on the couch. Me too. Like, they don't think I'm doing enough. And I'm like, people don't even know what I'm doing. What are you doing, psycho? What? Like, oh, what hello? is that about? Like, what is that about? You're home by yourself. Nobody knows what you're doing, but you're here thinking about what people are going to think thinking, about you doing. Yes. I've been feeling like that more and more lately. What the heck? Yeah. Weirdly, it's also because I'm thinking, maybe I'm, I'm overthinking about other people too and what they're doing. Yeah. And because I'm on Instagram seeing and seeing what everyone is up to, and it's awesome. I love that everyone's up to something. Yeah. I think it was starting to make me feel like I need to do I'm, something. Yeah. I need to do, oh my God, I'm not doing enough. I need to be, da, 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 da. and then like, then you start to think like, I wonder what they think of me. Yeah. Do they think I'm a loser? Oh my God. That person didn't like my photo in, anymore. Oh my God. Are they? And I'm like, what is wrong with me? Yeah. Get, girl, get over yourself. This is me talking to myself. Get <laughs> over yourself. Ain't nobody worried about you in a good way. Yeah. Like, and you don't need to be worried That's about the ego else. coming in. That's the mm -hmm. ego. That's the ego. It wants nothing but to make you feel like what? You need attention, gratification. It's, there's so many things the ego sought after and like we sit there and allow it because we're human. I mean, you, we like attention, of course, but there's a certain amount of attention that you really need in your life. And if you're constantly going after it, then you're losing yourself in the process. Right. So oh. and that's what social media is. And that's what it's become. And yeah. literally that's what I was talking about. Is like, what's saving me has been trying my best, my damnedest. <laughs> best to remain authentic to myself and not doing things just because I'm seeing everyone do it. Like, 100%. for example, the Busted Challenge. I'm like, oh my God, I need to jump on that. I need to do another. It's going to give me so many uh, views. It's going to give me so much you know, engagement, blah, blah, blah. But I'm like, girl, that ain't you. Girl, I don't even know what the Busset Challenge is. Somebody oh, well, just told you me this. <laughs> you need to do this. I got it the other day because I put a dance video yeah. up. And I'm like, wait, what's the Busset Challenge? They're like, where have you been? I'm like, oh, I guess I've been on rock. <laughs> but there's so many challenges where it's just like, it just makes you feel like, oh my God, I need to jump on this train. I need to jump on yeah. this trend. It's a cool trend. And nothing's wrong with it. I love it. I love seeing people have fun with it and just not take themselves seriously. I love it. Um, no, no shade there. But my thing is like, for me personally, I was feeling like every time something comes up, I feel the pressure of doing it for the sake of feeling like um, I need to stay on trend. Yeah. And yeah. I need to make sure that I'm with those girls that are on trend. Yeah. And that my followers know that I'm one of those girls and that these brands could seem. And it's just like, it's OK if you're not to. Yeah. It's yeah. okay. And that's where I think it goes back to how do people, me thinking about how are people seeing me? Because yeah. I need to see myself and be okay with how I see myself, period. Yeah. yeah. And then how I choose to put myself out there is going to be authentic if I'm okay with who I am and 100%. I'm okay with what I'm doing, right? Yeah. And that, if anything, is what is going to attract the following that get me 
and my evolution and my growth. Yeah. And the, and people and the brands that see me for me. Yeah. And not for this trendy girl that I thought I was supposed to be. Yeah. And it's, it's hard because sometimes you could be the trendy girl and your social media goes viral. Okay. Right. Off of one video. And then now people are following you off of this one video, but it may not be who you are. There you go. And then you can give them a piece of who you are after they're already on your platform. Right. Where I've always been the opposite way, the longer road, the road less traveled of like, this is just who I am. And if you don't see me for me now, then I don't really know what to tell you because I can't pretend here to bring you here. But that's a business thing as well. That's it. See, I can't pretend to bring you here. Yeah. Yeah. That's the thing. It is a business move as well. Like it's definitely a business move. It's a lot of strategy that goes into it. So as much as I want to be authentic, it's like also how do we give way to strategy in our business? You know what I mean? It's it's a lot to think about. But before we, you know, continue move on, because child, we can keep going. (laughs) Um, I wanted to get into your personal story. Okay. Like, um, I know you've been through a lot. You seem like someone that has um, been over a- able to overcome a lot of obstacles. Uh, I could see that in, your, in the way that you carry yourself and what you talk about. One thing that I will say is one time we were on set and you were listening to A New Earth. Yeah. And you told me about their podcast and you were like, you got to read it. You got to listen to it. It's amazing. Da, 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 da. And I was like, hmm. I like this girl. And then I went home and I think I ordered the book and I started listening to a podcast and reading the book. And it was really like changing my life low key, just yeah. like teaching me so much about the ego and its its purpose in our life to literally um, protect us. Yeah. But it's become, it's just evolved into something so much more than just, yeah. you know, a protection me- mechanism it becomes exactly. a problem. Exactly. It's yeah. become overly present. And I was like, wow. And that, in, on that note, like you have changed my life because you <laughs> told me about something that was, you know, opening your mind. And I, I listened to you and I went to it and it really opened my mind, my perspective about everything. So if you guys have not read A New Earth by Eckhart Tolle, I totally recommend you do so and listen to the accompanying podcast um, hosted by Oprah herself. It's one of her favorite books and her and the author kind of break down the different chapters and go through all that he's talking about. And it is is deep, deep. It talks about like what we as humans are doing on this earth, what our purpose is and what we're like, what we're doing, period, and how we can find our purpose. So um, definitely a big recommendation. Back to your story. Where do you come from? What are you about? I know Cincinnati, Ohio. Yep. Tell us about it. So I left a full ride college basketball scholarship. Yeah. Um, crazy. Yeah. University of Tennessee. Martin. Yep. Oh. And then I left from there and actually went to Thailand for modeling. So I quit school. It was random and crazy. And my family obviously was like, what's going on? Because I was the only one that actually went to college and had a full ride. So. None of them had gone to college. And so it was like, oh, wow, our daughter's going to college right. or somebody in the family's going to college. So and now she's leaving it. mostly in Ohio. Yeah. Right. Cincinnati. All of Ohio. Yeah. And like, how did you even go? What was that even like to get to college? First of all, um, you know, I loved basketball growing up and I was a tomboy. So it was like I was at the park every day. So like now when I see kids, it cracks me up because they're in there playing video games and stuff. And I was like, I have to do the park. Let's go. I'm going to play a game. Um, So that was the love of my life. And then high school happened and I broke this finger, two screws in it my sophomore year. Oh my God. Broke my ankle in two spots, tore my ligaments in my foot my junior year, which is your biggest recruiting year. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. So I was miserable. I remember going to the hospital. I was like in the best shape of my life. Yeah, two weeks before season started, I stole the ball from a girl, and when I ripped it, my foot stayed in place, but my body turned. Oh my god! So it was just done. So you literally turned on your foot. Yeah, it was like yeah, it was like you're you're done. Straight to the hospital, and I was like, you know, crying. I remember my coach came, my parents were there, and I was like. I'm just not meant to play this game. Like, I don't understand. This is my life. And like, that was a life changing experience, to be honest. Um, And then my dad signed me up for a thing in Kentucky where all these colleges come and watch you. But it's a bunch of girls. They just throw together and you play games all day. Okay. And I hadn't played because I had been injured. 
and he signed me up last minute. So I was like double zero. I wasn't even in the booklet to see my name or anything. Yeah. So I just go in and I start playing and my dad's like, okay, you're playing defense really well, but I, you have to play offense. He was always hard on me. He's like, you got to start scoring. I'm like laying in an ice bath at the hotel in between games. And I just went off and there was like how I got my, my scholarship. Jeez. Yeah. So it was just like, okay, I came in came and like, let's go. Avengers. You went yeah. off. Yeah. Okay. So that's how my story changed to now being recruited again. And I ended up choosing Tennessee Martin. Um, but I wasn't happy with basketball in high school anymore. I kind of fell out of love and like, then the injuries happened and it just made it worse. Um, but that was always my dream. So really I couldn't give up on it. I was what like, made you fall out of love with it? I think it became more of like a job and not fun anymore. Okay. Yeah. When anything becomes not fun anymore, it becomes yeah. a job. And when it becomes a job, sometimes it's not that fun. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. And I was like, I'm not, why am I wasting my time doing something that I'm really not enjoying? I'm putting all this time and effort into something that's like not filling my heart anymore. So I got to go. That's how I ended up leaving. Interesting. But then I, I guess you felt like, how long did it take you before you left? I was in. Because you said that you, you put in so much time. It's like, why would I leave? Probably, I would say around a year into college. And then, yeah, because I was only in a year. I transferred from Tennessee back to Cincinnati went to school there for the next semester because I just wasn't happy. And then um, you can't play because it's D1 to D1. So then I just left and um, was found at a modeling or found for modeling at a carnival when I was 13. Really? The same guy saw me when I came back to Cincinnati okay. at 18. Oh, what? Yeah. No way. Yeah. And so that's how I ended up. Like, I've been waiting for you. <laughs> you still doing that basketball thing or can I assign you? <laughs> wow. Yeah. So that's how I ended up getting back into modeling. No way. Yeah. So he 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 saw you at a carnival randomly. When I was 13. Right. Yeah. And then at 18, what happened? He, I was he downtown and again? he just saw me and he was like, you have to come to this oh thing. Oh my God. Yeah. So they had this okay. like convention. I don't know if you've ever heard of these where people pay like a few thousand dollars to go up there and like they want to be an actress or a model. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, I'm not doing any of that shit. Yeah. Like what? Yeah. <laughs> He's like, no, you're going to be great at this. I just want to take you. You don't have to pay anything. Just oh, please come. Nice. So I was like, you know what? I'm not really happy with what I'm doing so let me just try, try it. it out and then I ended up getting like the most callbacks at the place so wow. yeah I decided out to, of here. to do it and so you got all these callbacks and you followed through and you got signed in Miami okay yeah and then so did that mean you you moved or I went to I, it was Irene Marie at the time in Miami and I moved to Miami stayed there for a couple months and then went to Thailand Wow. Yeah. How did Thailand even come across your lap so early on in your modeling career? Not everyone just gets signed and, okay, I'm going <laughs> abroad. Yeah, and to Thailand, a third world country right. of all. Like, what? it's like, my family was like, what is going yeah. on? Yeah, what was um, that? I don't understand. Like, I've looked back on that now because my parents will bring it to light. They're like, Melody, do you realize you just left Cincinnati and, like, went to a third world country by yourself? Like, I didn't know one person in this place. And you get tear sheets there. So that's why they sent me there. Like you, I got to shoot Marie Claire and Elle and Harper's Bazaar. So I had those tear sheets when I was living there, but I lived there for three months alone. So it was like, I mean, there was other models there right, that you met, right. but you didn't know anyone. Um, so I went from there and then I traveled overseas and lived in different places like Germany, Paris, um, went to London, uh, went to different parts of Africa to work. But I was in all these places for like three months at a time by myself again. So I traveled all over the world, even Chicago to New York, Miami and here in L.A. Didn't know anyone either and kind of just went for it. I mean, I had angels, I always say, along the way that like I could stay on their couches or people let me be roommates for a little while. Like um, I always say, like I get free water every month right now. And that's an angel to me. Like things like that is. I, I definitely think of as blessings from yes, God, for sure. For sure. Yeah. For some some way, somehow, God always pulls through and lets you, like, you find a way. Yeah. You always find a way. Th yeah. Those are angels. Those are definitely yeah. angels. And it yeah. always works out some way, somehow, right? Yeah. I have this a similar, um, I guess, story where, like, when I first started modeling and really was like, all right, I'm going to do this. I also went to South Africa, didn't know nobody for three months. 
then went to London. I was just like, I'm just doing this. And yeah. always found myself in a good situation. Thank God. Yeah. You know, so God bless you for that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So you did all those stints, living all those different places. Mm-hmm. And then how did you find yourself in LA working? Well, I was actually in Chicago working really well there. That's like a hidden gym, to mm, be honest. Interesting. Yeah, so I was making money. And then I was like... And I feel like a few years ago, they were making people... You wouldn't leave for like at least 10K, right? Yeah. God. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Where are the rates at? Where are those rates at? Mm, we got to take a pause for that. Honestly. <laughs> like, oh, now they yeah. come like every so often. You're like, oh, okay, great. Yeah. But no. Yeah. Ugh. It's not the same. That's at for sure. Oh, what Social the hell? Media so Hidden Gem, you were in Chicago. <laughs> yeah. And make a money. Yeah. And out of nowhere, I don't know why, because I never wanted to live in LA. I'd been out here for months at a time, but I was like, there's no way I'll ever live here, live here. Really? And something just came to me. It was like a vision or something. I was like, okay, I got to go to LA. I don't know why, but, and my mom was like, do what? Like, you're just going to leave all this money. And like, you're, I'm, it's consistent. Here. Right. Like, what are you doing? Right. I was like, I don't know. I feel like I have to go there. You were just Someone called. was telling me I need to go there. Mm. Yeah. What was that? I, well, I came here, I think now that I've been here because I, you know, I had everything in my car. I lived out of my car. I had good friends that let me stay with them. So right. that was good. Right. Um, but there was moments I was like, what am I doing? Like, what is going on here? Right. Cause you're, you have to, I mean, this is a different breed here. Completely. People, everything, the business, the everything. Yeah. So I was like, what is it? Like, why are you here? And then lo and behold, probably I would say a year and a half, two years in is when I did She Ball. Okay. And that's where I got the lead in the movie. And oh. I was like, okay, you're going to take me in an- another what direction. Who's that? She Ball. She Ball. That's awesome. It's supposed to come out this year. Is it? Yeah. Wait, but we how? We filmed long in ago? 2017. Yeah, that's what I was like, Girl. what? Yeah. Wait, it hasn't so come you, out came, yet. you came to LA when? I came to LA, I've been on and off here since 2011. Okay. But full time, okay. I want to say, what year are we in? 2020. I've been here probably full time five years. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Oh my God. So two, yeah, I would say I was here for probably two years and, and then, then you got the She will happen 2017. Oh, that's amazing. And I played in this basketball beauties league. Yeah. Randomly was like, you know, I fell out of love with basketball. Yeah. Basketball always comes back comes around. Back. It's, it's it my, was your first love. Yeah. It was your first love. And it's helped that's me throughout my heels? life. Yeah. Tell us about that. So I did hoops to heels where I was going to like, um, I made like a little clothing line and then I was going to the boys and girls club. I coached, um, teams there with the little girls and I really wanted to do a movement where these girls felt like they could be business women and also go basketball players yes. because we lose that femininity yeah. in yeah. that, in, in the, the sports. Sport. Yeah. So that was like a calling of mine that I really wanted to dive into. And then I got into the Basketball Beauties League. So it kind of took like a backseat because I was playing in this and helping in that area and decided to play again. And these girls have been playing overseas, coming out of college, WNBA players, like, and then just some like hardcore balls to the wall girls with basketball. And I was like, okay, well, that never leaves me. Like you hit me, I'm going to hit you. So (laughs) we're going to (laughs) go. But that's what got me the um, the lead role. Wow! Yeah. Get out! Like what? But how though? Like was was a producer sitting in on the game or something? No, or like Nick Cannon came to meet with the guys that run the league because they okay. also run like a a men's basketball league gotcha. thing too. And he needed players for the movie. Gotcha. And so they were looking at Bella Hadid and a couple of other actresses for the this lead role. And he had just been talking about it in the meeting. And a week before I went to dinner with one of the guys that runs the basketball beauties league. And we were just talking about different things in the league and like life and stuff. One of my, he became one of my good friends. And so I hadn't done this anything. Is who? The, his, this other guy's name is Nick as well. Okay, that runs okay. the league. Gotcha. And so I'm sitting with him at dinner and I had gotten asked to do an audition for somebody in New York. It was for like a music video, but it was a monologue. So we were talking about something and I ended up, she's like, show me. So like I showed him the monologue thing I did and he's like, damn, he's like, you you're act, actress. like you're yes, good. Yes. And I was like, well, I grew up doing it, but I never really like, after I got in the modeling side, I was like, this is a lot for me. Like the whole entertainment industry and just like the kissing ass and being at parties and having to like just work your way up is I can't do that. It's just not who I am. I don't even have the desire to be in it. Like 
I can't small talk with people. So I'm deep or I'm out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's just how I am. I'm deep or I'm out. <laughs> we don't got time for the little small talks. And then we got the weather. And, and we got <laughs> Yeah. I yeah. feel the same way. Yeah. So he ended up telling Nick Cannon, they were all having a meeting. I think I have the girl for you for this part. And then I went in and auditioned. And Amen. that was it. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Look at that. That yeah. is also a blessing. Meeting the right people oh, who will speak your name the, mm-hmm. in a room of opportunities. Yeah. Let me say that again. Meet people and hopefully you can befriend people that will speak your name in a room full of opportunities. Yeah. Bam. Yeah. And then she got the lead role for She Ball, which is coming out this year. This year. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So you can yeah. catch her in that produced and directed by Nick, Nick Cannon. Cannon. Yeah. Ama- amazing. Yeah. So what? Yeah, girl. And the lead role for like my first film, right. anything in acting that I've done as an adult, I was like, Melody, you are, this is a blessing. Like, what a blessing. Hands down. That's huge. Um, I feel like that's a calling from God for sure for me when I was on that set because it came so naturally. I had people that have been acting for years come up, like Rebecca Namorne was my mom and she's been in so many things and she even went to the producers like, this girl is really good. She like made me cry. I couldn't wow. even get there. And so I was just like, wow, I'm getting like, it's natural. This Sometimes feedback. it's just, it's just, it's just, it was for you. Yeah. And you didn't have to fight and claw and yeah. force be it. weird and force it. Yeah. Sometimes some things are just for you. Yeah. I, I love that. I really believe in that too. Yeah. 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 Mm. And it was like, it felt like, I mean, it hasn't come out yet. And so people are like, how do you feel? Because it's been so many years. Like you felt like you got a break, but you didn't get a break. And I'm like, I've never had a break in my life, to be honest. Like I don't. That's what I sit in sometimes my, the negative feelings, like I talk about sitting in is that I'm fighting and going and like, even with relationships, with friends, with, with spouses, life in my career, I'm like, dude, I feel like I'm just fighting tooth and nail. God, give me something right, like, right. give me a little break. Right. <laughs> but something. then I look at the little things, like I'm saying, the angels that let me sleep on their couch and like getting free those things here and there. Breaks. Those are my breaks. Yes, they yeah. are. They are. They are. That's so true. I, I mean, I'm just nodding. Cause I'm like, so much, so much of what you're saying, I'm like, resonate with me. Yeah. My sentiments exactly. Like, I just be like, Lord, I'm tired. I am <laughs> tired. tired. Girl. I feel like I've been going forever. <laughs> and I mean, it's it's beautiful to see that I have been consistent in this in this field for so long. Uh, yeah. It's like I'm nearing blessed. 12, 13 years Same. of of just constantly looking for opportunities for myself and, and, you know, thank God that now our work is a little more on autopilot having, you know, great agencies that, and and great clients to book us, you know, consistently. And so I'm like, thank God I don't have to like worry too much, but also like in order to elevate, I need to think about so much and I'm my own advocate when it comes to everything before I ever had an agent I was my own agent I'm still Mm -hmm. my own manager I'm my own I'm my own everything so I'm I'm learning and figuring out the business on my own as I go yeah no one taught me how to do squat and that is is not easy it's so so hard and sometimes I I think I for a long time like 2017 for like two years I was like in a weird depression yeah because I was just burnt out yeah I was over it yeah and I was like I'm out of here I left LA went to London but then I was like well if I'm gonna make money I have to (laughs) stay working so I went and you know I, I realized, I mean, modeling definitely does fulfill me in a lot of ways because it was always a dream that I thought I couldn't have. Mm-hmm. So being able to realize it has been really fulfilling and beautiful because I love the art aspect of it. Yeah. And not so much the like the business side yeah. of it. You yeah, feel yeah, me? Yeah. So I think that's what was draining me. So once I was able to understand the two, um, I can still like have love for it yeah. still. It's the creativity. The creativity yeah. behind it. So now it's just a matter of now what? How do we evolve? How do we continue? Where are we going now? Yeah. We can still work our, 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 you know, our day jobs. I'm not going to leave my day job. Yeah. But yeah. for you, where do you go from here with your evolution as you um, are now acting? And it's like coming yeah. naturally. Yeah. Do you want to continue acting? Yeah, I, I definitely think that that came into my life for a reason. And I would love to be like, 
on a TV show. That's what I keep saying. TV shows yes. for me. I think Amen. if I just had a lead role that, um, what in a series that continued, then I could just have that consistency in that, that job. Yeah. And then maybe I would love to do like movies here and there, yeah. but I don't want my whole life based on my career where I'm constantly feeling like I have yeah, to have grabbing, something. Grabbing. Like, I want to be married. I want to have kids. I want to have a home like Amen. where I can relax and enjoy things Amen. and just live life. Yeah. So I don't think we're here to just work, work, work. No. And that's what not. we're taught. We're not. That's yeah. a very American um, thing. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Living we, in Europe, it's you know like you walk around like They're different. different. <laughs> They're different. Like it's everywhere besides America yeah. is like. They li- they work to live. They yeah. don't live to work. Yeah, America is like one of the only um, industrialized, so called prog- progressive countries that st- uh, or first world, so called first world. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that I just made a face, y'all. <laughs> that um, literally, like, we have the least amount of vacation days, and people don't even take their two weeks vacation. Imagine two weeks. Only 14 days out of 52 weeks of vacation. That's insane. I don't know how y'all do it, to yeah, be honest. Don't they take all, like, like, all of August off? Girl, they take <laughs> like two months off. Yeah. They take their summer, the season of summer, like three months off. Yeah. They'll put on their business, we'll be back. Yeah. And they're like, oh, well, see ya. I guess. <laughs> yeah. I'll wait. We'll be yeah. back. And yeah. that's how it is. If they're and good like, enough, they will. You, you will wait. And you will wait. Mm-hmm. And that's how world the world should be and operate. Like, I, I love the fastness that we have here yeah. and the opportunities that America does provide. But no, I'm not here to live to work. Yeah. Like that I know in my spirit that's not me. And thank you, Jesus. I feel like, like you said, with the angels, like things have been able to come to me without me having to like toil and and yeah. oh, and break my back. I work hard though. Don't get it twisted. Like I yeah. work hard for what everything that I have and everything that's come to me. Yeah. But I also do feel the sense of ease and the sense of grace that God has blessed me with because yeah. I hope it's because I'm moving in the lane that I'm supposed to move in. Yeah. And yeah, he's covering you. He's, he's covering. You all the amen. Time. Amen. Amen. And so it's, it's been beautiful. Yeah. Where are you now? Like, you're going to be doing more of that. You also co-founded, along with some awesome peeps, the Total Body brand. Tell us a little bit about that. Um, so the Total Body brand. she's a band. whole big boss, y'all. A Love whole boss. So. <laughs> okay? Don't, don't, under, don't underestimate uh, <laughs> models out here. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, the total body band is a full body workout. You can do like over a hundred moves and this little ass piece of equipment. It's like less than a pound. And so take it anywhere. And I'm like, that was an invention that I love because it's so easily accessible. And we have, we're in such a small space sometimes. Like if we go to a hotel or whatever, we can just do a little bit of band work, get our workout in. Because that's another thing that like, I think people see our industry as is so glamorous and you guys are getting your makeup done and you do this all the time. Oh, you look like get paid to look hot. I'm like, do you realize how much we work to have our bodies be the way that they are? Yes, there's genes and there's genetic I mean there's genetics right. and things like that. There's some people who are just blessed, but some people who aren't genetically blessed are working their asses off every day, watching yeah. what they eat, watching their figure, everything. Yeah. And it's part I commend of the business. that. I, psh, me, I ain't gonna lie to y'all. I eat what I want. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I eat what I want too, but I also me, love working out. So I, I've been yeah. blessed. And yeah, I I really should work out more. Yeah, I need to work out more. So yeah. tell like the total body band, you can take it anywhere. I need one yeah. first of all. I'm yeah. gonna need to get one. Yeah, but um, that's amazing. So how did that even come about? Like that was another god thing. I swear to. I was with my friend at a um, we were watching football here in LA, and my two partners flew in to meet one of my friends. And so we ended up all being together and we were ta- I was talking with them um, about, I think, Nordic track. And I just did a Nordic track commercial at the time. Mm-hmm. So we were talking about sports and fitness and stuff. And then we got to talking about this band and co-creating together and doing things. Boom. From there, like, we just It just went. happened. Yeah, and they were both from Jacksonville, Florida. What? Just randomly met them out. That's amazing. Yeah. While you were out. Yeah. 
That's amazing. watching football at somebody's house. That's awesome. Yeah. And you made a dope connection. Yeah. That that has happened a few times where it's like, if I hadn't gone out, if I had just <laughs> stayed that hermit, I, I would have met I some know. really dope people or made some great connections. When going out does help. Yeah. Yeah. But we can't do that anymore. That's your, I know. That's, I mean, it's so funny because I'm a hermit, like you said. Yeah. And I don't do the small talk yeah. and going out just to be at a party. Exactly. Like, I need to feel fulfilled if I'm going to come out. It's the same with my friends. I tell them all the time, like, if they're doing something that, like, I know at the end of the day, I'm like, oh, I don't really feel like doing right. this. Sometimes I say, you know what? Yeah, I'm, I'm not, not going to go. Right. Other times I'll fun. push myself and go. Mm-hmm. And then sometimes you meet great people. Exactly. You so, just never know. It just, but you were meant to be there. Yeah. Point blank. Period. You were meant that's to be there. I you ended up yeah. there and you met some amazing people yeah. who you're in business with now. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. That's so great. So it's been a fun journey because it's totally different than what I'm doing with modeling and acting. Right. Right. So and How, I've learned so much yeah, about business. What are you learning on the business side? Because I see, and that's one thing that um, I always try to tell girls who are asking me, like, how do you do this? How do you do this about as far as modeling? And um, it's awesome. Like, I, 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 I love that we all want to fulfill our first dream because that was my first dream. But like modeling was always to me going to be a platform to launch into different things that I want to do. Yeah. And so I'm always like, what is your purpose? If it is modeling, please do it. But if you have something else, like yeah. build that out yeah. because you never know where that will take you. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah. And then people will be paying you like they'll be fighting to get you to model for their brand because of what you built for yourself. Yeah. 100%. You feel me? And it does. It didn't mean it didn't need you to, you know, <laughs> clamor up somebody else to to like for yeah. an opportunity. Does that make sense? Just yeah. creating your own opportunities. Yeah. So what are you learning about business um, with Total Body Band? The funny thing is, is I I didn't tell you that I finished school. So I promised myself I would still finish school. Yeah. And I got my degree in business marketing. So you did finish your degree. Yeah. Where? where? Uh, here at California Coast Online. Okay. okay I had good. some some. Um, like 15 hours I needed to do. Cause I went to college when I was a junior in high school as well. Mm, okay, so I had okay. credits coming out already. Um, so I finished that, but I am such an advocate of experience over education. Yeah. I cannot sure. even like tell you enough and I'm mm. not to tell people not to go get their education, of course, but I've learned so much more in the real world doing it. Right. than being in the books. Like I don't even remember shit to be honest from school. Now I'm in this, I'm like overhead costs, taxes, um, going through the, the motions of like marketing and trying to figure out what is the best way and avenue to take it. And like, what are the people that, what age groups are you targeting, like target market? So there's so many different things that I'm learning during the process that I know I learned in school, but it just didn't sit. Same. Like, I don't remember any of it. I feel that. No, I feel that. And that's why I'm like, I want to get into that because um, I feel like a lot of people are starting businesses and it's a beautiful thing. And yeah, we're learning a lot more by just doing it yeah. than I know I, I don't remember much from my college days, yeah. sadly. <laughs> I don't remember the accounting, but it's it's resurfacing. Yeah, ooh, Overhead costs, all of the everything. Yeah. Like even how to set yourself up as an escort. Yeah. And like um, another makeup artist was telling me, if he had known this when he was 20, he would have four houses by now. Yeah. He's finally, he's 50 and he's now getting a second home for an investment property. Yeah. And he's like, if someone had just told me how to set himself up um, business wise, he would have been well, so much more well off. Yeah. But no one tells us this, especially as um, creatives, you know, uh, we, we don't have a nine to five. We don't we're not on W2. So we're using, you know, 1099 and all these different things. And like. I was just like, wow. And taxes, he was, boy. He, yeah, and taxes. And he was <sighs> even telling me, like, set yourself up as an escort. Um, then what's it called? You can use W-2s if you employ yourself as your own employer. So I was like, oh, this is what people have been doing. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. then it makes it easier when you're ready to, you know, look for loans for a home or whatever else that needs to show stability of income. Yeah. So I was like, oh. <laughs> See, all these little things no one's telling us. Yeah. So maybe I will, when I finally get to it, I promise I will do a model course with these little things that people don't tell you up front that you probably should consider. But yeah, yeah. like with all of that, I'm just like, wow, so much that we're not, we we weren't yeah. taught. Yeah. And like, what what more are you learning? 
Um, I just feel like the, the biggest thing is how to market myself with the product, how to market the people around me that are using the product, and then just figure out what's the best way for us to create conversions because we have to create this brand awareness first. And I think like my ultimate goal is to help people. So, and that's with anything in life that I do. So that's first and foremost, I have to build that trust with people in order to create conversions. And sometimes people just want money, money, money. And like, you know, I'm the only female in this business. So we got a different mouth. We got a different thought process. We, we're just different. Yeah. So working with like three guys and us sitting on the phone, it's funny to see the way that they think compared to the way that I do and how we can all learn with each other. But sometimes I'm like, what are you guys even, what? I've already thought about 10 different scenarios before we got to this one. So I can tell you all of them, but women are like that. Right. We're constantly right. like, okay, going, what do I do going, here? Going. How do I do this? How is this going to happen? And like trying to figure out how to navigate everything in life. So I got, what it's really taught me is the confidence in myself being a part of this because I never been part of a business. Like I've obviously marketed myself in modeling and learned the business of that, but this is a different type. And so to be involved in this and to have the confidence that I do to get on a phone call and pitch a deal and like close it, girl, that's I'm like, awesome. That's amazing. That's some yeah. boss shit. Okay. Yeah. yeah. No, I love that. Cause yeah, that's another thing is like when you get into product based businesses, you're now marketing not just yourself, but a product. Yeah. And with that is sales. Like how do you convert this product, this, this, whatever you're marketing into yeah. sales? And I'm learning more as I dive into the business side of things and also developing my own products. Now I'm just like, okay, you do have to build that brand awareness, but yeah. then you have to build trust with them. Why would they want to buy from you versus anybody else? Yeah. You know what I mean? Because yeah. we're not doing anything crazy different. We're not reinventing the wheel as such, but why would they want to come to you versus yeah. somebody else who's doing probably something similar. Someone, and yeah. that's all about building that trust first, right? Yeah. And that's how you convert them into yeah. buying from you and then hopefully staying loyal to yeah. you. Yeah. That is, it's, it's a whole world. It's a game. It's a whole <laughs> other world. It's a game. How do you then, you know, um, brand yourself or market yourself authentically? Because I'm seeing like a lot of people and businesses just kind of playing the numbers game, which is great, but then you're losing the the soul of the brand. Yeah. You're losing the soul of you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, um, how do you stay authentic? I think it's how you stay authentic in, in your own life mm. shows up in your business. Okay, yeah. So if you're not someone that consistently stays true to yourself no matter what if you're somebody that kind of falls into like oh this is going to give me more money so I'm going to go here which right. is not a bad thing I'm not right. saying that people are bad for doing that but it's if you stay consistent and humble and authentic to your brand and who you are as a person I think it translates when you go into business so there's no way that I would come in and try to sell something that doesn't fit my needs and like what I want in my life I can't do that with any product. Like I've had products, people come up to me with products for social media and I'm like, mm, like that ain't going to work. This ain't going to make your tummy flatter. Like, so there's no way for me to be inauthentic because it's just not who I am as a person. So anything I'm selling is truth, like no matter what, but that's just me. Some people are not like that. So it's deciphering that to, to build that trust and loyalty with a brand. What you're saying is kind of hard sometimes because there's so many ads going. So like people, obviously advertisements are things that are thrown in your face 24 seven. You see it enough. You're like, Ooh, maybe I need that. No matter what the person or right. brand is like. Right. So, I mean, there is, there's different ways of business. You can be inauthentic and make a shit ton of money. Right. Hey, and you see, and that's fine too. Yeah. If that's your goal, but whatever I, I do, I want it. You feel I couldn't go to sleep at night. I, whatever yeah. I do, I want it to have not just um, impact, but I want it to be purposeful. And I want it to, at the end of the day, just be authentic to me. Yeah. There's actually um, a um, documentary, um, The Social Dilemma. Mm, yep. On, on um, Netflix, and I referred it in my past episode, where like they just talk about how all these brands are literally just 
we're 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 is is we're just numbers. We're just yeah. an algorithm. And if you haven't watched it, it's Social Dilemma. I I referenced it in my last uh, episode. But basically, these brands are you know we're numbers to them. We're yeah. it's all about algorithm and finding a way the to, um, to market to us the best. And like it's just uh, it, something about it just doesn't sit right with me. Yeah, it doesn't sit right with me. I couldn't as a business person. Uh, the more I get deep into my own business and finally, you know, getting to that point where, okay, I have to think about marketing. Yeah. It's like, yeah, you really just have to find a way to be authentic for yourself, like where it makes sense. Cause if it's not, if it's not you, it shows through too. Yeah. It shows through yeah. and I just can't, but yeah. I appreciate you so much. And you are an amazing person. Um, you can tell that everything you do is authentic and yeah. it comes through, like you said, in your business because of who you are. You know who you are. We're always constantly evolving, but yeah. you I can tell you know who you are and that's beautiful. And I just thank you for being who you are. Thank you. Because <laughs> following you and getting to know you is just, it's beautiful. And I love the person that you're becoming, the boss lady that you are. <laughs> and is there anything else that we should look out for coming from you? I think another thing actually would be my website, um, Moments with Melody. I write on there. So writing is one of my my greatest gifts, I think. Um, and I wake up in the middle of the night sometimes with like intuitive thoughts where I just start writing. Like it's like crazy. It'll just go paragraph, paragraph, paragraph. And I don't even know what I'm writing. And then I'll go back and read like, what did you just write? And I think it's messages I'm supposed to give to the world. Yeah. That's beautiful. No, literally that's, um, God, I forgot what art, what, uh, author was, but they said they got up and they would literally just sit almost like in a trance yes. and just messages would just come and yeah. flow through them. And it is, it yeah. is. Okay, I'm definitely taking a look. I'm definitely taking yeah. a look for sure. Sometimes I share things about my life as well and like um, relationships and things that I've gone through just to help people yeah. so they don't feel alone. Yeah. But then there's messages that are just like, Shh, wow. okay, this has to go out today, give it to them. Please uh, yeah. share them. Like, yeah, do you share them on your Instagram? Um, sometimes, sometimes. but they, they've been getting sometimes longer. Okay. So then my captions become long and I don't know if somebody's going to sit there to, to read it. Trust me. Some people are. Yeah. So that's why I started the blog. Yeah. So. Share them, yeah. share them, share some with me, please. Yeah. But I'll yeah. definitely be, ta be sure to take a look at the website moments with Melody. Melody. Yep. Love it. Love it. And anything else? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing else at this time. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing else at this time. <laughs> Dang it. Stop asking me. Sorry, no. But uh, Oh my God. No, that's great. Thank you so much. I see a book in your future then. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I could see it being compiled into some kind of book. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. Only time can tell, but thank you so much for being with us. Um, I appreciate it again. That's miss Melody Ray. That is her Instagram as well. So follow her. And as always, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Be sure to follow us on the IG at victory over circumstance. And on Twitter as well by the same name, Victory Over Circumstance. Thank you so much. Bye.